Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in. Good afternoon. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. As we continue through the week, and we will continue to educate and inform you. That's what we do for almost eight years now we uh, are focused on education and information. That's what um, we want to continue to provide to the consumer. So before we get started, I invite my guest in. Uh, just a reminder, there's a couple different things. If you want to reach us during the week, uh, there's a couple different ways you could do that. Area code 408-838-9060 is the way to contact us. Or you could email me, joe at reradiolive.com. That is joe at reradiolive.com. More importantly, be sure to download the podcast. Uh, if you're listening to this now, you're listening to the podcast, pass it on to your friends, coworkers, family members. We want to continue to build the awareness, and that is, uh, again, focusing on education, <coughs> excuse me, and information. That is Real Estate Radio Live. All right, as most of you know, again, what we try to do is bring in great guests like today, uh, information, education, to really, uh, the effort is to make you, the consumer, a more wise consumer. But we also have a good listening audience, a fairly large listening audience for the real estate industry. So we're going to continue to help them, bring them information, and not only what the consumers are looking for, but help each other uh, in an effort as well. All right, I'm going to invite my guest in today, Cheryl uh, Rivera-Smith. She's a realtor with Cobble Banker in Palo Alto. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, expectations uh, from a realtor, but also what consumers should expect. And we're fortunate that Cheryl's background is, is nationwide in a lot of aspects of the industry, not only real estate, but title and much more. So welcome in, Cheryl. Good to have you. Good to be here, Joe. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Palo Alto is a great area to be working and living, I'm guessing, right? <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. It's paradise. Yes, it is. It is for sure. Well, let's. Uh, we have a lot to cover today. Uh, if you could get started maybe and just give our listeners an idea of your background and then what brought you here to California and what you're up to today. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> you can truncate it, uh, yeah, brief it a little bit. Yeah, yeah give us an idea. I've, I've been around for a while. Um, real estate was my first job. Mm -hmm. I worked for a company in Dallas, Texas called Henry S. Miller Company, and I, I, I think they're a Coal Banker franchise now. Oh, okay. So um, it was my first job. I had a wonderful mentor, Virginia Cook, and um, my mother had also been in real estate, mm -hmm. so I uh, have, have a little bit of uh, legacy there. Sold real estate for a while, mm -hmm. um, ended up uh, having some uh, a small child and needed to have some regular hours once he got into school and uh, did very well at the real estate, but just chose to go into title and mm -hmm. wanted to be a, a closer, an escrow yeah. officer. And uh, after, after about a year and a half or so, I was promoted to that position uh -huh. and became a commercial closer for uh, a a large regional title company mm -hmm. in the Dallas area. So closed commercial properties uh, for some of the major developers mm -hmm. had some very, very large closings and 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 made it through the SNL crisis of the 80s and when everything exploded yeah. or imploded. Uh -huh. And um, we were we were down to nothing. So I, I went from closing between one to three billion dollars in, in escrows a year mm -hmm. to zero. Wow. Uh, so needless to say, the company restructured it, uh, it, it, it resurrected as a, as another company later, but I was without a job and started brokering foreclosures. Had, right. fortunately I had my broker's license from, from before. You were prepared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it just brokered foreclosures for, for, for several years. Uh, my undergraduate degree is sociology. So I was able to take a step back mm -hmm. and, um, and say, what's, you know, where is the business? And right. that, that was it. Hudden, yeah. Hudden VA repos that not, <laughs> nothing, nothing commercial, nothing, uh, yeah. anything. But, uh, so I did that for uh, a few years and, then my husband had a transfer to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I had always wanted to go to law school, so in 1990, I went to law school. Wow. And um, 
and from there he was he was packaged out of of his company and we took his golden parachute came back to Dallas and invested in properties and started brokering again and um Oh, you want me to stop now? <laughs> <laughs> well, just bring us to, uh, yeah. no, you, no, it's a, an incredible background, and I'm going to get to yeah. that in a couple of minutes. But, yeah, and then bring us to how you uh, made your way out to California. Well, um, uh, the short story is uh, I have a, a son, daughter-in-law, and grandchildren mm-hmm. here. So uh, we're, we were back in Texas uh, fixing and flipping. Uh-huh. My husband had some health issues, and, uh, you know, we're doing some soul searching. We'd, we'd, we'd made our money there. Yeah. And it was time to, um, time to dial it back a little bit. Uh, he couldn't support me in what his role was in in that respect mm-hmm. and so we just uh, figured out how to put all that onto autopilot or 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 disperse it mm-hmm. and um and here we are very good yeah well welcome in and uh one of the reasons i i really enjoyed looking forward to having you on the show after looking at your background and what you've done um there's there's a there's a huge value in having the education and the background that you have. You know, in the title business, you understand lending, even though you haven't been in that. But you, you, you're in the middle of it when you're in these transactions. Real estate, you have an understanding of obviously nationally what's going on, and we'll talk a little bit in this show too, a little bit about the Texas market and some of the stuff because we do have a lot of interested consumers here, uh, quite a bit that are looking, interested in investing in different parts outside of California. Can most of us know that? You know, if you're looking to invest here, my gosh, you know, you better go somewhere else because the cash flow, the numbers just don't work. They just don't. So that fact, um, we'll talk a little bit about, we'll talk a little bit about that too. What I'd like to do, um, and you know, we have uh, another five, six minutes before our first break here on the, on the podcast is that talk a little bit about the expectation because you've seen this from all aspects of, of the industry. What should consumers expect from real estate agents? I mean, it's one thing, I think, Cheryl, to just say, oh, well, good service. But, you know, break it down, if you will, for us, um, the expectations, because they're not really complicated. I think in many cases, what is the consumers listening to the show today, and they do, you know, they're, you're talking to them, you're talking to them as an audience. What are some of the things, take us through it, that the consumers should expect from a realtor when engaging in business with them? Well, they can get a lot from a realtor or not much. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on who their realtor is. And, um, and I, I've heard comments from, from some of the discount brokerages that you've got people that are order takers mm-hmm. and, um, and they get, get, the, get the listing and get uh-huh. it out. And, and they do get it sold. There's nothing wrong with right. that. But, um, you know, there is an, a lot of expertise that's necessary mm-hmm. in, in becoming a realtor. And you've got to get the documents right. You've got to be able to coordinate all of the inspections as a listing agent, mm-hmm. uh, all of the inspections, um, uh, the engineering reports, if necessary, the, um, yeah, uh, the disclosures. Uh, get, you have to get it all right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it, it could be a mess. Right. It's 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 just incredibly. I I want to say complicated, but once you know it, mm-hmm. you you can get it. But it is complicated. I don't know how new people can do it nowadays. Uh, I I know what I know, and I know how hard it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things we do know, you and I were talking before the show here. We do know that most consumers doesn't you know very educated, especially in the Bay Area. Let's face it, most consumers these days are more educated consumers. I think all of us would mm-hmm. agree. But still, you have almost 90% of people that still want a qualified realtor. So that should tell you something, just what you just mentioned. This is not a job that the average person wants to take on or think that they could do uh, because it's so important in so many different aspects. Right. And you're dealing with people's largest investment in most Mm -hmm. cases, especially out here. Um, Yeah, I I get a new client or a new buyer client and Mm -hmm. they go, oh, we've been pre-approved. We've got this. We've got that. I said, Show me your source of funds. <laughs> Show me your pre-approval letter. Right. Nine times out of ten, it's a conditional pre-approval. Right. So if I had gone into a transaction with that, even though we might have had the winning offer, right. and you know, again, it's multiple offers, mm-hmm. you know, ninety-nine times out of a hundred, right. 
I probably would have lost it because it was a conditional pre-approval. I have to send them back to the lender and say, you need to make it unconditional. Yeah. You've got to do your homework. That's a good point. I'm glad you bring that up. For those that are listening today on the podcast, seriously, as a consumer, this comes up a lot. If um, Cheryl brings up a good point as a realtor, she'll take a look at that letter and see if it's really what she would call valid or not. When we say valid, and I've, t- I've had you know shows on this many times before, Anybody could produce a piece of paper that says you're pre-approved. But you have to dig a little bit deeper. You have to find out if you're really going to get serious about out looking for a home or representing that, that, that financing, you'd better make sure it's an underwritten approval and you better make sure it's up to date. And it's not just someone that sat at their computer and just generated this letter and popped it out, right? That's, I think, what you're referring to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that, and that does happen quite often. Um, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good place to start. Sure. But you've got you've to dig deeper and you've got to make sure that those, um, all the, all the stone, stones have been turned over and there are no unexpected surprises. Yeah. On the, on the um, purchaser side as well, you know, there may be a time when we may have to give 10 plus offers on 10 different properties mm-hmm. before we can win one because the competition is so... Uh, strenuous out right, here. Right. It's uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. No, it is. We have about a minute, uh, maybe a minute or so before our first break here. And um, so, what would you say that? Um, and we'll, we'll I'll pick up on the other side. How has your expertise in this industry? You know, knowing the title business that you do, understanding the entire transaction, which I think is unique. It's one thing for someone to say, Cheryl. You know, I've been a real estate agent for twenty years. And I've worked with title people and mortgage lenders. It's another thing to say that I've been in the title business at, at, at different, you know, at the highest level. I understand transactions, big and small. How has that helped you navigate with your uh, customers and your relationships? Oh, it, it's amazing. Um, it, it's helped me as far as dealing with the older clients mm-hmm. because a lot of times we have probate involved. Right. We've had uh, moms or dads. Uh, usually they've lost a partner. Mm-hmm. So, and, and not necessarily re- recently. Um, right. You know, last year seemed to be uh, my year of, of holding holding the hands of, of the the elder people that mm-hmm. were needing to downsize. Right. They were in they were in houses much too big for themselves, and in some cases, they haven't gotten rid of anything since the 1990s. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> not only do I have to gently uh, uh, tell them that we need to deal with the hoarding uh, issue, right. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but we also have to have to get them through a, a very very traumatic event. Right. All right, what we're going to do is take a quick break, uh, just a minute or so. Stick with us on Facebook because we're going to just take a quick break. We're going to come back, and we're going to finish up our conversation with Cheryl. She is with Cobalt Banker in Palo Alto. We're talking about consumer expectations, and then we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the market, and we may even talk a little bit about the Dallas market for those who are interested. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. We'll be back with you to continue in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. The world is changing and so is real estate. It's changing in ways that give consumers more control with more affordable options. So what are your options? Hi, this is Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live. I've been on the air educating and informing consumers for over seven years now. I'm excited to announce that there is now a more efficient and cost-effective way to buy and sell real estate. Our team at Real Estate Radio Live is launching a new program designed to help buyers or sellers like you in real estate, lending and title. That's right. We'll coordinate the entire transaction for you. So you benefit by working with the same team, saving time and saving money. We'll guarantee you'll not only be working with the most qualified, hand-picked experts in real estate, lending and title, but you will also save a significant amount of money in all three services as well. Act now and benefit from changing the world of real estate. Call 408-838-9060. Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. 
Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. As we continue today, our guest in studio is Cheryl Rivera-Smith. She's a realtor um, with Cobo Banker in Palo Alto. First uh, part of the show, we talked a little bit about customer expectations, a little bit of the background. Um, Cheryl has an incredible background in real estate and title and understands, but more importantly, also um, other areas, uh, other states. So she brings a lot of knowledge here to California and her business. So we're going to jump back in and talk a little bit more about um, there is a big appetite here in Silicon Valley for people. I get, I would, I don't know, at least 12, 15 calls a month, I would say, or emails, Cheryl, of people that are interested saying, Joe, I really am, I'm interested in investing in property. I like the idea of real estate, but I realize that it makes really no sense for investment real estate here in California. For the most part, California, like we live in here in Silicon Valley, the numbers just don't work. So that being said, a lot of people still want to build a portfolio. So a lot of people will go to places like Texas, Florida, North Carolina. I could go on and on. There's several places now people are advocating to, to buy rental properties and to keep and hold for cash flow. Give us some perspective specifically, if you could speak to Dallas, only because you're from that area, you understand it. You have property there before. You know how that works. Maybe tell us a little bit about the Dallas market, number one. And is it still a market that you would advocate people to look at um, for investing? And then maybe kind of break down some of the areas and opportunity for us. Thanks, Joe. Um, well, it is a good area to invest in, mm -hmm. uh, simply because the Dallas-Fort Worth area is an, a, a tremendously growing um, metropolitan area. Uh, they've got uh, the new Toyota plant that moved yeah. there from Los Angeles area. They've got Nebraska Furniture Warehouse, which is a uh, Warren Buffett mm. property. Okay. Uh, there's just so much. Uh, the home, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> what can you <laughs> that's say? That's all. That's all you need. I there. Know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they also have a lot of land. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of place to build. Right. So they, the that's that's a plus, but mm -hmm. it's also a minus. It's not like the peninsula. You're mm -hmm. not going to be investing and get the windfall that has happened over the last few years mm -hmm. here. It's just not going to happen. Right. Um, However, with that said, I've got a family that I'm working with where um, he owns two houses in a, in a neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, probably cumulatively about $4 million worth. Okay. One is a, one's a rental, one's a home. Mm -hmm. So they've got some, some time to play with, but they're, you know, they're not getting a lot of rent on it. It's okay. not a great rental property. It's in an area where the, the builders are tearing these properties down uh, and building the, the McMansions on smaller okay. lots. Um, well, 5,000 square foot lots, yeah. more or less. But what they can do is they can sell the rental property and they can 1031 exchange that. Mm -hmm. So let's say that they get, um, you know, somewhere between two and three million from that property. Okay. If they were to rent it out right now, they'd be lucky to get three to four thousand a month. Really? Wow, for that expensive a property, huh? Well, they've <coughs> they've owned it. I mean oh, okay. they've owned it <laughs> since the seventies, okay. I think. <laughs> with, and with and you know, changes. they I think they paid fifty thousand dollars for it. Uh, not a bad investment. No, yeah. not a bad investment. But, you know, I guess the 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 um ROI on a fifty thousand dollar investment's not too bad. Yeah. But if you're tying up, you know, two to three million dollars for that much money a I month, agree. that's a bad investment. Right. Bad B A D. Right. So if you're sitting on something like that and you're looking to cash flow, mm -hmm. you can ten thirty one it. You can go buy rental properties there. Uh, there's also a vehicle called a statutory D Delaware Trust mm -hmm. where they have these uh, commercial companies that can take your money. Mm -hmm spread it out amongst investments, but you don't have as much control over that. Okay. Um, and, and those investments tend to be multifamily or mm -hmm. retail or industrial. Um, but you'll get a, an 8% return on that income. Right. Which isn't bad. No, it's very good. When a long time ago in the eighties, my husband and I were, were presented with some, um, limited partnerships mm -hmm. that, that during the SNL debacle all imploded. If we had invested our money in that, um, we would have lost it all. Yeah. But 
what I did, having, I guess, the background <coughs> I did or the, I guess, that little analytic mind uh-huh. that I have that's sometimes uh, a little strange, uh, I, I looked at it and I said, if we took that money and bought one rent house, mm-hmm. took the cash flow on that, we would make as much on that rent house as being a member of this limited partnership that's buying this apartment complex. Mm-hmm. And we'd have total control over our property. That's yeah, what we did. Right. And then we did that one wow. and the next one and the next one. Okay. And so I'm an ad, you know, it sounds glamorous to have a piece of a, <laughs> a, a multifamily or a shopping center or what have you, but it's also nice to have control over your assets. Yeah, now it is. And Good sometimes point. it saves your assets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we continue this, uh, before I forget too, before, before we uh, finish the show, if, the, if someone's out there listening to the show, they want more advice about the area, your expertise, the area that you cover. By the way, do you primarily stay in the Palo Alto area? You try to do that or just depends uh, on the client? I, it depends on the client. Um, you know, just because I'm I'm in the Palo Alto Mountain View area, okay. uh, I I tend to do more business there. But I go up and down the peninsula all okay. the way um, up to South uh, San Francisco and down to San Jose. Okay. Uh, I haven't made it over to the East Valley. <laughs> I haven't gone down to Gilroy. Probably. All right. Won't. Well, we'll get you down there at one point. <laughs> what would be the best place for people to reach you? Is there a phone number, website, if they wanted to reach you? Well, you can email me at okay. cr as in Cheryl Rivera dot Smith cr dot Smith at cb norcal.com as in Colwell Banker Northern California.com cr.smith at cbnorcal.com or you can call or text me at 650-386-0595 again 650-386-0595 and then you can find me on on any of the Calif- uh, of the Colwell Banker uh, websites there you go so uh, Dallas back to Dallas then so would you um I know that you, you, you're familiar with that state probably mo- more than uh, others. Would you then advocate if, uh, I mean, you obviously are helping someone right now. You gave an example. Mm-hmm. But as people listen out here, you always have to be careful. I'll say before I ask you this question, obviously do your due diligence, do your homework. If you know someone out there, make some connections, make a trip out there. I mean, there's nothing, you know, you have to be really careful. But it sounds like you're, you would still, if it's the right area or right deal, you're still advocating that would be a good investment for people these days. It would be. Um, you know, if you're expecting it to have the glorious weather we mm-hmm. have here, I think right now they've, they've got some, some sub-freezing right. temperatures, and in the, in the summertime, it mm-hmm. is hot. Yeah. Um, in Houston, it yeah, is hot, really hot and sticky. Humid. Yeah, sticky. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like Dallas much better than Houston, um, but uh, that's just my personal preference. Mm-hmm. We do have a, a, a condo that we bought on foreclosure. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister and I at uh, South Padre Island. It's okay. a it's a hidden gem down there. And when we're when we seldom go down there, but when we're not there, it's on Airbnb. Uh-huh. It's with a property manager, and it more than pays for itself. It wow. make it makes money. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the the moment we bought it, we probably had about seventy five thousand dollars in equity because you. it was a foreclosure, uh-huh. and um, it's just been sitting down there. We've got winter Texans from Cav- Canada uh-huh. renting it okay. right now, and then uh, you know in the summertime it stays busy. The fall, uh, it's it's kind of a quiet time, but yeah. uh, it's a great 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 little investment. Dallas is good, and it's it's very very um, sought after as far as as rentals. And um, there's there there's there's some pockets, and there's a formula. So, yeah, there are, and so I would say uh, that's another reason to contact Cheryl. You know, if you have you want some guidance. Again, she's lived there; she understands it. She understands real estate, and I do think I did a show on this. I think it was last week about you know just kind of scenarios and strategies and examples, Cheryl of you know, having rental properties here. And some people would say, just like the stock market or just like any good investment, some people would say, you know what? Take some of your earnings off the table and reallocate. And so you could use that same principle with a 1031 exchange that you had mentioned. You know, you, we've had this wonderful run-up in California. Let's face it, especially in the Bay Area, we all know, right? So what would be the downside if you have a couple of rentals to maybe sell one here, take some of that money off the table, so to speak, and then... You know, by my gosh, could be several properties in oh, Texas, right? I'm expecting these people will probably buy the the ones I was telling you about with that one house. They'll right. probably buy about ten, 
And so out of that particular property, Mm -hmm. they may take a a little bit of the boot, which is some of the cash that they Mm -hmm. will pay taxes on. Right. um, And maybe buy a very nice house for a couple hundred thousand dollars out of Mm -hmm. that. Then from there, they can have that rental rental income of, um, oh gosh, you know, maybe anyway, $20,000 a month. Yeah. Maybe more. Uh, from from that purchase and um, and buy their themselves yeah. a house. Then the other house that they have here that was the homestead. Okay. Again, they would have um, it was it's it's a, a single a single male, yeah. and so he would have to pay, uh, only have a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar deduction at right. you know as as his home. Right. Uh, and from the federal from the federal income tax and have to be subject to income tax over that. If he were to convert that to rental property for mm-hmm. at least a year, uh, ask your CPA, year <laughs> yeah, or two, right. ask CPA on that's this, right. but rent that out for that long, then then he could sell it and 1031 that right. asset right. and leverage leverage it up. Yeah. So, you know, it could be just an incredible windfall from right. from living in a very modest house and having a very modest yeah. income on the rental. I would agree. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time for today, but uh, Cheryl, this is a great show. It goes fast. We'll have you back here because there's a lot more stuff we could cover, but you did a nice job at really taking us through some of the expectation of the real estate agents, what a consumer should expect, your knowledge and background about Texas and some of the other stuff has really helped our audience today. So I want to thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. For the day, we're going to sign off. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. Remember two ways. Uh, Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. If you need to reach me during the week, area code 408-838-9060. Until next time, thanks again. Take care. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com.